Gracie Abrams, so happy to have you with us here today. Um, I'm sorry I missed you on Sunday at Gillette. A lot of people showed up for that show. I don't know if you witnessed <laughs> that. I, I can tell that people show up. Yeah, it's a pretty <laughs> full room all the time. It's nuts. Uh, so um, Gillette Stadium, I noticed that after your performance, you went and got lobster. Are you a seafood kind of girl? I am a seafood kind of girl. My whole family is from New England, so I feel like it's in my blood a little bit. Like where? Boston and Maine. Shut your face. My sister lives in Maine, so if you like need a place to stay, she got you covered. That's <laughs> so sweet. Thank you. If my family ever stops talking to me, I will give your sister a call. Very nice in Portland. It's a two-bedroom, so she's fine. Um, Amazing. <laughs> Good Riddance Deluxe is out on uh, June 16th. Looking forward to that. You have some success. I mean, you're on tour with Taylor Swift right now, but uh, definitely looking forward uh, to the Deluxe album. What is different about this one? I mean, I think it was kind of hard to choose one to cut it off. Like, we had we made so many songs when we were in the studio working on the album, and um, if I had it my way, it would be like 35 songs long, but, um, it was kind of a, just a nice opportunity to, to include some more tracks that, uh, exist in the world of, of good riddance. And, um, yeah, I'm really excited for people to, to have it. Now, when did you start writing songs? Like, are you a, was you just like, you know what, I'm going to jot this down and put a medley behind it. Like, when did that start? I, I mean, I, I just was journaling from when I was really tiny. It was, I felt better. Um, I found early on writing things down than often like talking to people about the way I was feeling. And I think as a young person, you often rely so heavily on adults for things. And this was kind of the first place that I found in my life where I, I didn't need anybody else involved to kind of feel like I was um, being productive. Uh, and it, it was a real emotional outlet, obviously, more than anything else. And um I was lucky enough to have a couple instruments around the house when I was when I was small and I kind of just naturally started putting journal entries to to chords that I didn't yet know how to play properly and uh I loved it kind of immediately so I continued Wow, your journal entries are way better than mine. Mine were about like Larry Moses making out with my friend Nikki and I was like so mad. So I mad. had that sounds not far off from the kind of stuff that I wrote <laughs> <laughs> minus the names yeah uh yeah minus that. the names yeah so instruments around the house uh i know you play the drums piano right guitar yes. mm. what about the flute can't do the flute today That's there's always saying. tomorrow <laughs> the triangle like if you need backup i could na i could totally crush that for you on stage. i will give you a call we are <laughs> lacking triangle I appreciate that. So how did this uh, tour with Taylor happen? Did you get a, a call from Taylor Swift and she's like, Gracie, you're the one I want to open for me. And you're like, I'll think about it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no. I, um, it, it's obviously kind of like a, I mean, she's, I think, as we all know, it, it, being a part of her fandom, the best at keeping these secrets and, and, um, and is very obviously selective with that information and careful and all the things. And, uh, I found out through my agents um, and texted Taylor uh, instantly and immediately got back like that, I like screaming, crying, freaking out response that I kind of, it's just, it, it's, uh, she matched my energy pretty immediately. And I, you know, it's very, very deeply surreal. She's been such an amazing friend to me since I've, you know, gotten to know her, but she also has been my favorite artist in the world since I started listening to music and her writing has just inspired me, not just as a writer myself, but um, as a person who has like attempted to be vulnerable in all the ways that I can in my relationships with other people and with myself. And I think to you know, like it's, it, it continues to sink in kind of deeper and deeper with every show that I've been lucky enough to be a part of on, on the Eras tour because um, her influence is like so beyond, you know, words, not just to me, obviously, but to everyone who has grown up with her music and to people who haven't, who are just kind of somehow only now understanding like, how magical and um, important her work has been. 
um, and will continue to be. And um, so it, it's very, uh, I do not take a second of it for granted. And, and I mean, the, her show is the best show I've ever seen in my life. Every single time I watch it, it like somehow hits a new, you know, chord emotionally and it continues to change the course of my life every day. So, you know, I mean, I could talk about her forever, but just love her very, very much. She's the best. Yeah, I wish family members love me as much as Swifties love her. You know what I'm saying? Like there is. I mean, it's unconditional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I went to the show and I noticed a lot of people getting emotional seeing Taylor Swift on stage for the first time. But with your shows, people feel the same way. You like you resonate with people, you tap into emotions. And how do you feel when you're performing and you see someone in the front row just so excited to see you and you're speaking words that actually, you know, strike them? I think mostly it's just this funny thing where you're like I write these songs from such a personal place and in often very isolated ways. And the second that you're on any stage um, kind of singing with somebody else, with a stranger and, and having that kind of like very rare and like oh, this, the connection there makes it so immediately no longer just about you, but about, everybody else and and um it's been an amazing reminder that i'm not unique in my experiences that we're all kind of like regardless of where we're at in, the, in our own lives and regardless of our background and it's like we we there are these universal human experiences and these feelings that are you know important to name but also important to release and to be able to do that in a communal space um, I, I don't know very many besides like a, a concert where people are so willing to like cry next to strangers and kind of um, laugh and dance. And I think I've never seen it at the magnitude that it's shown, at, you know, at the, at the era's tour. And um, I think that is something that is so magical about it is like, especially during soundcheck when the stadium is empty and you're looking out and you know every single seat is going to be filled. It's like, I'm I'm always so emotional before anything even happens to know that everyone who sees the show that night like it's unforgettable watching her play and then also just to be in such a huge space with so many thousands of people like all going through something that is simultaneously so personal and also so communal it's like a really good feeling I think especially after the past handful of years where we've been required to isolate and um to be reminded of like the humanity there is really valuable yeah no it's a beautiful thing because i mean you watch the news every day and there's like negativity and you go to one of those shows and people are hugging strangers everyone has that thing in common so mm. they all come together do you get a lot of ticket requests anybody asking you for tickets <laughs> yes <laughs> and i wish that i was able to help more than i can i'm just like you know i'm just i just i hope that i wish that every single person on earth could be there you know um now your song i know it won't work we're playing it right now on 92 pro fm i mean the title of it seems a little negative gracie uh do you want to tell me who yeah. it's about <laughs> oh god i mean it's just kind of like when you recognize that that uh there maybe isn't a happy ending or something which i think is like um you know not to be cynical it's because it's not that but i think like this fairy tale assumption is super harmful to the truth and human relationships and people change and and people evolve in different directions and that is a great thing and i think also can be really sad so that's kind of what the song is about yeah, slash like also thank you for playing it it's really well, nice of you you're welcome <laughs> want to throw that in to make sure uh <laughs> that you knew because uh big hit with us and i did mm. create a game i hope it's okay with you because i know we're running out of time the game is called i know it won't work or i know it will work i give you <laughs> celebrity i give you celebrity couples and you tell me mm, I know it won't work or oh Jesus. I know it will work. So to be safe, you may I mean these are gonna be easy. For instance, do you watch Vanderpump Rules? I don't. Sorry. Right. Well, do you know, know Ariana and Tom, the guy with the white nail polish? Uh no, but I've heard like I've seen I'm so out of the loop, like that's why I'm gonna be the worst contestant for this game. But but so long story short, no, I don't. I I've never seen it. Sorry. that's okay i don't watch it either but to give you a promote like to promote your song just say i know it won't work because they're broken up 
Okay. Oh, they already broke up. Yeah. Well, maybe it won't work today, but maybe if they're kind and right for each other, maybe it will later. <laughs> yeah, you got to catch up on those episodes. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Britney Spears and her husband, Sam. I know it won't work or I know it will work. I want it to work for everyone. I'm too, I'm too sensitive for this. I'm like, I hope, I hope, Brit, I just hope Brittany's happy. I don't, I didn't even know she was married. I hope she's happy. She, you know, I mean, what a life. Like, I just, I hope everything works for her. That's my answer. All right. I'm just going to give you the last one. Thank you. Beyonce and Jay-Z. Well, they, I think they have a beautiful family, and I think that she is, like, obviously the queen, so whatever she wants, she should have. So I know it will work. I suppose. I, <laughs> I didn't mean to stress you out on this. <laughs> Me, I like, sweating, to to, sweating to, on the radio. <laughs> I'm just trying to mention your, your song more often. Well, listen. I appreciate it. I, <laughs> I, hope that, I hope that your listeners like the song. I love it, and it's. I know it's sad, but also maybe like the chorus is a little bit fun to dance to or something. So of there's course, a little bit yeah. of both. You got it going on, Gracie. We really appreciate you, appreciate you taking the time to chat with us. Congratulations on all your success. Have fun on the rest of your tour. And listen, next time, why don't you come? We're in New England. Come. Oh my God! Please. Going through seeing the fam. Anytime you'll have me, I will be there. Thank you so much for your support and thank you for your time today. And yeah, I am, I'm very grateful. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day. You too. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Bye.